What's going on guys? We are going to do an IRR calculator. All kinds of investors have confusion on what is IRR, how is it different from ROI. This is a free calculator. The link is in the description box below if you want to down or, or get it. It's a Google Sheet, so you need a free Google account. And you can start playing with this once you just hit, uh, you know, open it up, hit file, make a copy, you got your own free version. Uh, for more templates, don't forget, check out smarthelping.com. I've got hundreds of different templates for um, startup models, cash flow waterfalls, accounting tools, HR tools, all kinds of stuff. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video. All right. What we have here is a very simple sheet where you can put in some equity invested over time. You could just have it in period zero or you could invest over time. You have an IRR target here, 12%. What that means is you've got a return that's going to be due each period, which is going to be based on the beginning equity balance of that period. The beginning equity balance is based on the initial investment plus any future investments, and then minus any equity distributed in the previous period. In this case, you can see here at a 12% IRR, if there's no distributions until year 15, the amount due is amount due to 263000 Here's the check on You can see we just run a simple IRR calculation on the cash flows. Oh, we had one distribution here, but we can zero that out. Um, you could put in any data in here. It depends on your situation of what's distributed. If nothing, then at the end of each year, this is the ending balance that you're due as an investor to get this IRR target. If you were to be, to be paid $6,000 every period, you can see the, the the balance never changes. So you get your 12% your on your equity every period. That means you've met the target and all you have to be paid at the end is your initial investment. So this is where IRR and annual return are confused because assuming there is a 12% payment every period each year, then yes, it's just you know, 12% of 50,000 paid every year, and then at the end you gotta pay your balance. But if if you miss one period, all of a sudden, now look at the balance is a little bit higher, unless you catch up. And now you have to pay 12% on a little bit of a higher number, or you have to pay the extra equity that you mix, missed. So it'd be an extra 6,000 in that case. So this is a very nice calculator for anybody to use. You can do a little return summary down here. Pick your exit year, let's say exit was five. Then that's your cash flow. I did total invested, total ROI, which is the total amount returned um, after repayment of equity. So you can see how this number is very different from your internal rate of return. And equity multiple meaning anything above one is positive return. Uh, then the discounted cash flow analysis. So down here is pretty cool. You can see if we set this equal to the IRR, it's just net present value is zero because that's the definition of IRR is the discount rate that you discount the future uh, cash flows so that it equals the initial investment. If we were to make it 11%, you have a slightly positive NPV because you're targeting 12 here. And if you discount it and you say your rate's 11, that's slightly higher than what we, uh, or slightly better than what we targeted. If it was higher, let's say 20%, you got a negative. So normally, um, IRR tools let you put in cash flow and it calculates the IRR. This tool lets you define the internal rate of return or IRR. And then based on any distribution or future contributions, it tells you how much you're owed at the end of that year. And I did it up for 15 years. And you could do this to, to uh, adjust the year count. But this is a great tool to explain what is going on with internal rate of return. And it can work for any, any investor. So this should help explain some of the dynamics that are going on. Uh, all right, that's all I got for you. See you on the next one.